Good evening, everyone. This is another video uh, from Dr. Rostenberg and beyond MTHFR. Really, what we're talking about tonight is treating methylation disorders and more specifically, how do you uh, fix a COMT and MAO problem that's affecting the brain? So that is our goal for this short video to explain that to you. This uh, slide that we're looking at first will be familiar to those who have seen our first video and really what you're going to see is that the MAO enzyme is important for serotonin, dopamine, and adrenaline epinephrine breakdown. Okay, And that all occurs on the presynaptic neuron. Now the COMT, the methylation pathway, the methylation enzyme, COMT, is only found on the dopamine and adrenaline neurons. And this becomes important because COMT can be slowed down, leading to over uh, activation and too many uh, molecules of adrenaline and dopamine being released at once. Too much dopamine can be a problem because dopamine can go into the inflammatory pathway and turn into things like ammonia, which we're going to talk about. So our goal with treating this is you know, obviously treating the whole person and the other factors that are involved, but when we're getting down to specifically treat the COMT problem, we're going to be talking about methyl groups uh, because what we want to do is speed up the COMT as fast as we can. Now, those of you out there that have a genetic SNP in COMT, you might be thinking, well, how do I speed it up if it's slowed, you know, naturally? Well, that's a good point, uh, but even if you have a polymorphism that slows down your COMT, all the more reason to make sure that that slowed enzyme is going as fast as it can. And that's why we use methyl groups, as you'll see. So I've given this problem a lot of thought, uh, and I actually drew a picture to try and uh, further our understanding of what we're dealing with. So this is the problem with dopamine. It's also the problem with epinephrine and adrenaline. Excess L-DOPA and dopamine can cause problems, okay? This bucket is basically a neuron, and the neuron's not healthy. It's got holes in the bucket, and as you can see over here, these holes are caused by SNPs, uh, things we inherit. They're caused by vitamin deficiencies, especially methyl groups. They're caused by exposure to toxins and heavy metals, low antioxidants and acidity and changes in pH. So graphically representing... Uh, these different injuries to this cell are the holes in the bucket. And what you're going to notice is that the dopamine goes into the bucket, but because of these problems, the dopamine is spilling out. And the dopamine here is like gasoline. We want the gasoline to stay in the bucket where it's safe and not going to cause a fire and explosion. But if it's leaking out all over the place and turning into toxic dopamine metabolites, then there can be a problem. And that problem can cause DNA breakage, ammonia formation, formaldehyde, oxidative stress, which is really the foundation of all neurodegenerative diseases. The research is pretty uh, clear about that. So we know, we know what's causing neurodegeneration. We're going to talk about how we fix it. So more data on how neurodegeneration occurs when we have these uh, COMT SNPs. Uh, basically, the research has come out of the Parkinson's disease world and they've shown that people taking L-DOPA who have Parkinson's have high homocysteine and that is evidence of a methyl deficiency so remember when you don't have enough methyl groups you do not recycle homocysteine when you have a methylation problem one of the problems one of the manifestations with that is that your homocysteine levels rise now it won't always show up in the blood test because that's it has to fill the you may have homocysteine in your brain that doesn't show up on a blood test so you know we're going to talk about that in another video here shortly but basically people taking L-DOPA have high amounts of dopamine excess dopamine using up all the methyl groups to try and process it causing homocysteine to go up here's another uh, research article says the same thing I have a picture of water going down a sink because that's what's happening to the methyl groups in the brain. It's getting sucked out of there. 
And we need to reverse that process. We need to prevent that because loss of methyl groups in the brain leaves the brain defenseless against heavy metals, oxidative stress, inflammation, and injury. So this research from 2010 says the same thing. The high levels of homocysteine in people taking L-DOPA, which we could say the high levels of homocysteine in people who have too much dopamine and too much epinephrine, those two are interchangeable, have a deficiency of methyl groups in the brain because the COMT enzyme, whether it's going fast, whether it's going slow, is working overtime to try and process all of those hormones, all those neurotransmitters. So the key point here is too many neurotransmitters depletes your methyl savings account and then you have a deficiency. We can prevent that. This research came out in last year, 2013. It's a great study and I just love this picture because it puts in graphic form what we're always talking about in our office. Inflammation in the brain is shown as yellow here. So this is the brain on fire. This is gray matter burning up, inflamed. And in the group that got B vitamins, now you're looking at the fire put out. The fire has, it's still there, but it is way reduced. And all they did in this study was give B vitamins, aka methyl groups, aka 5-methylfolate and methyl B12. And this was able to slow the destruction of brain, even in patients who had Alzheimer's. So it doesn't matter how unhealthy you are today. Do something to get better every, and you can improve. And that's what this study shows. So B vitamins, methyl groups absolutely protect the brain. And here's some more research to show the same thing. Uh, we were talking earlier about how L-DOPA and dopamine uses up all the methyl groups that are in the brain by trying to process these hormones, these neurotransmitters through COMT. And what the research says is, hey, if you give SAMe or SAMe precursors, aka recycle homocysteine with good methylation support, you can protect the brain against the side effects of too much dopamine. That's really nice. Eat plants. There's lots of methyl groups in plants and get the right supplements, work with the right approach, and you can really protect your brain. I'm going to mention St. John's wort because it is a powerful herb. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying it is better suited for the patient with depressive symptoms. And that's something that should be worked with, uh, you know, a licensed healthcare provider or someone who, uh, you know, has clinical experience in dealing with that issue. But St. John's wort is fantastic at increasing neurotransmitter levels in someone who doesn't have enough. Um, it can help with cravings. Most cravings and most addictive, addictive behavior, um, people with OCD, people with smoking, carb, you know, you name it, addictive behavior is driven by a decrease in dopamine and a desire to raise it again. So all addiction kind of comes back to the reward that comes from spiking your neurotransmitters. So one thing that St. John's work can do is keep your neurotransmitters up so that you don't feel the craving. So it's a tool we use in our office for that purpose. But again, better suited for the depressive patient, someone who already has too many neurotransmitters should be careful um, because St. John's wort is an inhibitor of monoamine oxidase A and B. So it will, it will allow dopamine to stay in the synapse a little longer, which, as I said, can be a benefit. Um, so now we're looking at adrenaline. And you'll... Adrenaline metabolism, very similar to dopamine metabolism. Again, you can use St. John's wort here at the MAO enzyme to turn that green arrow, you know, from being up so high, basically turn down the speed of that, and that will tend to push epinephrine over here towards COMT. So St. John's wort can be a tool to decrease MAO activity and to, and to push epinephrine towards COMT, um, which is what we want to do. We want to make sure you get all the methyl groups uh, dialed in so you can make sure the COMT is moving fast enough. And what that's going to do is bring epinephrine down this pathway to its uh, final resting place in the urine. We want to get rid of that stuff. Um, we want to prevent epinephrine from going into the toxic inflammatory pathway where it can turn into ammonia, something that the methylation world has been uh, talking about for some time. So I did a little digging into an old biochemistry book and uh, found a nice nugget in there about uh, ammonia. And we've been using this with our patients since then. But basically ammonia does a couple 
nasty things to our brain. Um, it will cross the blood-brain barrier and it will cause alkalosis. So it will change the pH of the cell and make it really hard for the cell to be optimally functioning. So it doesn't even matter if you have a good SNP, if you have the perfect fastest COMT enzyme in the world, if it's too basic or too acidic inside the cell, that enzyme will slow down. So you can kind of give yourself, in a way, a genetic problem, an enzyme problem, by messing up your pH. I mean, how crazy is that? I mean, if you think about cancer as a side effect of uh, pH imbalance, I mean, there's a genetic problem, cancer, and it's caused certainly in part by acid base imbalance. So uh, the point there is ammonia is very, very basic. It's a good cleaner. That's what makes it strong. Um, but it also does something to our citric acid cycle. It messes up the mitochondria. It combines with alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. And basically what this does is it just steals the fuel from the furnace inside the cell. The fireplace is taking all the logs out so you can't burn it for heat anymore. And then uh, you're left with all these toxic glutamate molecules inside the brain. And we all know uh, the bad, bad side effects of MSG. And that's what ammonia could do in the brain. So we'll talk more about ammonia in a future video. Um, the dopamine solution. So earlier I showed you the problem. Now we're looking at the solution. Um, I, like the I like the model of a bucket. It's something I can understand. And certainly when I communicate to patients, it's something we can all agree on. Um, dopamine should now stay where it is supposed to be. It's going to be more effective at lower concentrations because it's not spilling out all the time. If you have all these holes in the bucket, you got to constantly pour dopamine in to keep the water level at the right level. Now with the, with the bucket fixed, you don't have to add much hardly at all. This is the benefit of getting this system balanced. Um, I pointed over here to, you know, basically we're fixing the bucket with nutrients, nutrition from plants, antioxidants, and proper detox strategies, uh, which we do in our office. And this allows the body to use the dopamine it makes much more effectively. Um, and there's lots of things you can do without even taking medication or supplements to raise dopamine. And the number one is balance your blood sugar. And then we're going to talk about that more as well. And the benefit of sealing the bucket, so to speak, is that it doesn't spill onto the floor. The gasoline stays inside the container and you don't end up with this toxic dopamine and adrenaline sludge in the brain that's causing all kinds of inflammation. So uh, that is good news for us. Now we look more at the research and we see, hey, vitamins do protect the brain. When they looked at patients who were getting um, sick, or having neurodegeneration from L-DOPA and those who were not. So people who did have a negative effect from L-DOPA and those who didn't, the difference was, well, the people who didn't have a problem had better vitamin status. What they're really saying in coded research language is there's more methyl groups in the brain to protect against the side effects of L-DOPA in patients who don't who didn't get um, sick from it. So we can add methyl groups back into our brain and get that same protection. Antioxidants do protect dopamine neurons. So in other words, the color that the color in nature that gives food its color is a great source of antioxidants. And one thing to keep in mind is that the thinner the skin of the fruit, the more antioxidants it has because the more light is entering the fruit and the more the plant has to defend against the oxidation from sunlight. So a banana doesn't have as many, nearly as many um, antioxidants as does a red bell pepper. The red bell pepper skin is very, very thin and so the, the fruit itself uh, is enriched with antioxidants. I just think it's a beautiful um, relationship there between sunlight and antioxidants. So if you want to get more antioxidants, uh, eat fruits and vegetables that have a thinner skin. Um, but basically the research just kind of proves what we've been talking about this whole video. Damage from dopamine and epinephrine is basically prevented by antioxidants that we make, intrinsic, ones that we make, glutathione, superoxide desmutase, things like that, important methyl cycle processes, and also extrinsic antioxidants. So now we're dealing with things that we take in our diet, nutrients, the right supplements. So we can use supplements, we can use diet, we can encourage our own body to make glutathione, and that's going to protect us from the you know, ravages of brain degeneration, which is a, becoming a bigger problem. So uh, based on a lot of the comments we got off the first video, I wanted to just give you a basic protocol. I hope that uh, the information above was useful to you, that helped you understand um, 
kind of how your body works and how these SNPs are affecting um, brain chemistry and brain health. Um, I'm sharing with you, um, you know, a set of tools I use in my office. There are good supplement companies out there. There's a handful of them that are very good. Um, I believe Metagenics is among the best. That's just the tool that I have as a clinician uh, learned to master. It's what I use personally. Um, so I have a lot of respect for them. They were the first company to bring methyl uh, folate into the United States. So they've, they've been on the cutting edge of a lot of processes here. They have about 100 people on staff to go to work every day that have a PhD. So there's a lot of people checking everybody else's work. Um, so the one nutrient I like for just basic um, methylation support is vessel care. And vessel care has 5-methylfolate, B12, betaine, trimethylglycine, choline, zinc, B3, and B6. And so it has the right ratios of those nutrients to really take care of all these SNPs. So it's if you if you have these SNPs, um, you know what I also should put in here, I don't know why I didn't write it in, is COMT. Of course, that would be another SNP that we um, would want to take care of. So um, that's what Vessel Care does. Vessel Care covers all those bases. St. John's Wort with Folate, I mentioned that earlier. It's great for craving control, great for uh, keeping neurotransmitters elevated. I will, I will tell you that people who have low neurotransmitters do have cravings and they have depressive symptoms. Okay. Um, it's, it's a safe herb, although some side effects can occur. So, you know, just work with someone, work with a professional like myself or someone else uh, through MTHFR support who can help you dial in what's best for your body. Um, Phyto Multi, fantastic multivitamin. I think everybody should take this every day. It has the right types of methylfolate, the right types of methyl B12. It has extremely high amounts of uh, phytonutrients and antioxidants that help the brain protect itself. And it also has multivitamin support. So it does provide a really broad uh, support and um, it's a good thing to take every day. Again, I mentioned blood sugar. We're going to just expand on this over and over again as we go through these videos. But small frequent meals is critical for balancing your blood sugar and therefore balancing your neurotransmitters. If you skip meals, your dopamine and serotonin and epinephrine levels are just going all over the place. And there's no point. There is no point in taking supplements and making an investment and in getting healthy without the discipline and the, you know, the wherewithal to balance your diet. And that's really what um, we promote in our office every day. So, you know, what we're talking about is dopamine, COMT, MAO. I um, hope some of the information I've given you tonight is helpful. If you're interested in trying some of these supplements, I just put my website down there that allows you to get it at 10% off. It does help us keep our lights on and provide more information to the community. Um, but as long as you're getting taken care of, that's the most important thing. Um, any questions for me, I'm happy to answer. I'm here to help. So um, with that, we're going to close this video and just stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. Thank you.